All right, I will now take the opportunity to introduce the three speakers we have today. They are presenting on the contribution of the non-physician clinician midwives in improving access to emergency obstetric care to rural communities in Ethiopia. Atela Takele is a senior public health professional in MPH stroke RH and a chief midwifery expert. He has more than 18 years experience in maternal newborn and child health quality improvement in academia, clinical and development activities at different levels. He is currently working at the Ministry of Health as a technical assistant and is leading the second reproductive health strategic plan development 2021 to 2025. Our second speaker will be Belete Belgu, who is a chief midwife and a health monitoring and evaluation expert with over 12 years experience. He has previously worked as an academic dean, clinician, midwife tutor, and midwife advisor. Currently, he is the monitoring, evaluation, research, and learning manager of the Ethiopian Midwives Association. He has managed different project evaluations and researches. Our third uh, presenter for this morning would be Mr. Fekadu Alemu, who is a public health specialist, MPHRH, and a registered midwife. He has more than 19 years experience of teaching midwifery and public health in Ethiopia and South Sudan. He's a consultant in management and clinical services, health systems establishment and strengthening, public health initiatives, strategic planning and development of midwifery and nursing. His research interests are in maternal and newborn health, health access and other health related issues like HIV AIDS and PMTCT. Currently, he's a senior advisor to the Ethiopian Midwife Association and a PhD candidate in MPHRA at Addis Ababa University. Welcome, Takele. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine and Salvia, as well the audiences uh, across the globe. So I will continue with my presentation and here is outlines and uh, I will start with the with the introduction. Uh, maternal mortality is yet unacceptably high in the world. And of the 295,000 days, 95% are in low and middle income countries. In Ethiopia, there are about 14,000 maternal days every year, it, which is also very unacceptable. And again, additionally, about 2.6 million stillbirths and 2.8 million newborn days occurred per year. So distance from home to health service facility contributed for high maternal mortality rates, particularly if the distance from home to institution is, you know, greater than four hours um, time. So just do we need really MSc uh, clinical midwives in Ethiopia? So different, you know, researchers could try to answer all these, all these things. So skilled birth attendant with access to cesarean section decreased maternal mortality. Other research indicates that mid-level providers with surgical skill training averts the shortage of obstetric surgeons as task sharing activity. So Nigeria, India, Ethiopia, DRC, Pakistan, and Indonesia, you know, accounts about 50% of all, you know, all the number of additional uh, caesarean sections planned in a year, about 2. Point, I mean, 3.2 million caesarean sections in a year. So 
in 2008, about 278,370 cesarean section need was calculated. However, only 1% was achieved as research indicated. There is also high disparity access to cesarean section between rural poor, about 0.3% only achieved, and versus rural rich, which is about almost similar, 0.6%, and is higher for urban rich community, which is about 8.3% have an access for caesarean section. So generally, there is less than 10% of facilities provided caesarean section anesthesia and blood transfusion in Ethiopia. Met need for emergency obstetrics is stagnated at 18% despite 100% goal for emergency obstetric and bone care in, in the world and in Ethiopia as well. Approximately 20% and 1% of the facilities provided cesarean section at urban rural facilities and, and respectively as well. So there is a study in Southwest Ethiopia. Comprehensive emergency obstetric care service was less than 2% in remote areas. That, that, that the research, you know, want to show that remote areas need a trained midwives in caesarean section. And 6.6% is, is in, in, the, in the urban district areas uh, uh, in general. So WHO recommended tasks sharing to address the rural health workforce with surgical skill gap. So just research, you know, indicates some, some cost benefit analysis when compared to obstetrician and, and midwives with, with surgical skill training. So there is a 30 year cost per major obstetric surgery, about $38.9 for trained midwives and $144 for you know, obstetrics and gynecologists per surgery. So, you know, trained midwives in surgical skill, you know, could be cost effective as, as the research indicates. In terms of attrition rate of medical doctors, about we took three batches after seven years of graduation, almost 100% was, you know, uh, leave their, their actual work compared to 12% of of trained uh, mid-level um, midwives and other healthcare providers. Therefore, training as a conclusion of these research findings, as a literature review, training non-physician clinicians is less time consuming and less expensive than physicians do. Employing non-physician clinicians costs less than employing physicians, which doesn't mean that as, as the detailed research shows, which doesn't mean that hiring physicians is not recommended, but you know, hiring midwives in the rural area would be costly, you know, very interesting for, for the community. Crucially, non-physician clinicians tend to remain in rural and underserved settings longer in a greater number of than physicians do. So this is uh, taken from a research by Bergistan uh, in 2015. Thank you so much. Belletta will continue. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the, the objective of uh, this study is to explore the situation of master's clinical training experience and also the current practice and challenges in Ethiopia. And the specific objective are to document the current practice and the related challenges. And the uh, second specific objective to examine the situation of the training and competency of clinical midwives in Ethiopia. And the third one to identify the training and deployment related challenges of clinical midwives uh, in Ethiopia. And uh, the methodology uh, we use exploratory qualitative study uh, with comprised of phenomenological studies, case studies, and document review. We use this uh, method because 
uh, most of the clinical midwife were graduated, but they are not uh, working as they were trained. So we further need to know what was the reason behind uh, uh, their practice. So we use this method. And the setting Ethiopia is divided into 10 regional state and two city administrations. And also the state divided into 68 zones and the 900 uh, waradas. A total of uh, 4,230 government owned health facilities, among these uh, 3,982 are health centers. Uh, 52 video free teaching institutions are available in Ethiopia. Among these, 31 are uh, universities. From the, this 31 universities, six universities are providing MSc clinical uh, midwife. As of July 1, uh, 2018, the number of midwife graduated in Ethiopia was uh, 20, 000, around 20,000. And the study population are all midwife working in the health facility, teaching institution, government, and as well uh, working in NGO. And the other senior uh, obstetrician and, and gynecologist were participated, and other key informants from the Minister of Health, the Regional Health Division, hospital heads, dean of schools, and the media free uh, department heads were involved. And the exclusion criteria midwife participated in the FG were not uh, included in the informant interview. And the sample size we use is what sample size and sample takings, purposeful, uh, purposeful maximum uh, variation sampling technique were uh, used. And the data collection FG and KI were conducted from February 1 up to 14 March 2020. And the interview and FG were audio recorded and digitally transcribed with the uh, consent of uh, participants. And in addition, concurrent field notes were also taken. Uh, and the mean time taken for the interview was 50 minutes, which is ranging from 26 up to 85 minutes. Uh, like uh, quantitative data, we also assure the qualitative uh, data by assessing the credibility that's whether the findings are plausible and trustworthy, and also the data uh, uh, triangulation. Uh, then also dependability, and the third one is what transferability, where then uh, the findings may be transferred to another setting or context or groups. So we check the quality of uh, this qualitative data. Uh, the data analysis we use at last the version seven. Point five, uh, user KI and FGD data were audio recorded, translated, and transcribed verbatim into English. And the transcript analyzed using the pre simple of thematic analysis. All careful read and reread the transcript of the interactive basis, and then coding and categorizes data was done. Additional codes were created as a theme embedded during the coding process. Uh, And the reporting, the report presented uh, thematically under each main theme, subthemes, brief overview was given, and the researcher opinion is provided in the discussion part of this research. And further, direct quotes were used to present the participants' voice and speech. And ethical Review Board of the Ethiopian Midwife Association grants the ethical approval and the purpose and objective of the study was well explained to each participant, and well informed and also consent or were gained. And participant participation was participatory and the participants were informed to have this bro. Thank you. So Fakadi will continue the result part. Go ahead, Fekadu. Fekadu, please unmute yourself and continue. Thank you very Thank much. You. Uh, the result um, was uh, 
and uh, divided into three parts. One is a document review, and the second is qualitative interview and also on-site uh, supervision. On document review, the program uh, started in University of Gondor in 2010 uh, after needs assessment done among stakeholders, including the uh, Minister of Health. Um, at that time, there was a need for to train these uh, midwives to do this procedure, as uh, it has been seen by the Takala. Ethiopia is a very big uh, country with 112 million and uh, with uh, an accessible obstetric health service. For that, uh, we need uh, this mid-level cadres to cover rural and underserved mid uh, communities. So with that, this curriculum was started. Uh, since that the training, uh, over 329 uh, clinical midwives were training since, since 2010, up to the training time, uh, up to the data collection time, that is 2019. Uh, among these 329 clinical midwives, master's levels, uh, 30.7 were females. Uh, this is a distribution with the universities. Uh, as you can see, this is the highest number is from University of Gondor. And uh, the, the, the pink, the blue one is male and the pink ones are female. And um, uh, in addition, the, over the six universities, which uh, uh, but let I mentioned uh, there are currently 216 students. So when we add up the two, we have over uh, 550 clinical midwives in the country. Uh, and uh, again, among this, one of our third are females. So among these graduated midwives, when we see uh, their status, whether they are working, actively working or not, uh, only 3.6 were uh, providing full CMOX service, uh, which means including caesarean section. Um, majority of these uh, are working in two out of 10 regions of Ethiopia. Uh, however, when we assess uh, on document review whether they have uh, any significant medical error or not, we, we only found two postpartum wound morbidity, but no case fatality and other complications, so which means they are practicing safely, the procedure safely. And we also try to assess whether the students are doing with the standard, that is 15 caesarean section were recommended in the curriculum as a level of competency, uh, looking at their country's ex experience. So there were 15 CSs, uh, the students uh, achieved more than that, uh, the minimum the average number of caesarean section performed during the study time was 25, uh, with a standard deviation of plus or minus 7.4. Uh, the second part of the result was a qualitative finding. Uh, this is the description of our study participants. We interviewed the Minister of Health, we interviewed the Regional Health Bureau in some country uh, where you are working. They may be side state uh, as uh, ministers. The others are uh, obstetric and gynecologists who are teach, uh, trainers as well as colleagues, uh, school deans, clinical midwives. The majority of them are males and their age is, uh, uh, for most of them, is about 15, um, 44, um, 35 to 39 years and have an average of nine years uh, experience. So, the first thing we, we were asking were whether this uh, is uh, program is relevant in Ethiopian setting and can be also duplicated in other countries set up, scaled up. So almost all our uh, respondents say this program is relevant. And uh, the reason they mentioned were uh, that <coughs> one, this cadre of uh, professionals, they can provide pro comprehensive care. Like this is a word from um, a regional health bureau head, which says that in the in that region, which have more than six million po population, uh, the majority of mothers die from obstructive liver and PPH. So these midwives can provide a comprehensive care that is antenatal care up to preconception care and including postnatal care. So in addition to the the CS service, they can provide quality 
care in different directions. So they prefer these professionals compared to other mid-level um, providers. The other uh, point they mentioned on the relevance of this program was uh, it improve, it has impact on quality of reproductive maternal and child health uh, service by saying this improves the quality of care uh, because these students, uh, this um, level of care risk, they can supervise and they can train and coach and mentor the junior midwives and BSC midwives and um, also diploma midwives in, in the way they are assigned there where the, so they can provide the service in general. That is another relevance. Uh, the third one is they provide holistic care uh, to the mothers, they provide the continuum of care and they provide also non-traumatic uh, delivery. Like when midwives are doing uh, the, the, the operation, they, they try to give chance more to non-traumatic interventions like instrumental delivery, uh, spontaneous vaginal delivery uh, before they go to caesarean section compared to other providers. So the, this is another quality and relevance. The other is in the where these professionals are, are, are assigned unnecessary referral to higher centers were reduced so that the mother, mothers and the community are not wasting their time by, by, by traveling longer distance and by, by, by traveling to higher centers which are busy and uncomfortable to mothers. And like this is a word from a FGD participant, they said in their health care facility, they were managing 23 deliveries before the arrival of the clinical midwife, but after the arrival of the clinical midwife, the security attendant rate increased to 130 per month because the community preferred them and are satisfied with their care service. And then the other importance of these professionals, they say, is timely decision making. Midwives, uh, as they have like accumulated experience in their practice and education, they make timely decision, uh, especially differentiating normal from abnormal. And that is important, like when they decide the caesarean section or other intervention, they make it timely and they save the baby and the mother. Uh, the second point uh, next to the relevance where we were asked, try to assess whether this training is quality up to the standard uh, or not. So overall, the opinion seems like the medical doctor, students and uh, and uh, deans, they say that, 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 that the students are trained in, in quality uh, because one of the reasons is there is no significant in wound infection rate and uh, other um, complications um, compared to, to, to other pro providers. Uh, and in document review, we were trying to assess 3,100 operations uh, from that document. Uh, and then from this, we only found uh, two complications, and it is in, in an ac acceptable range. And we said the number of professionals, which was done by the, the midwives in, in their service area where they are assigned, it outnumbered uh, the, 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 the performance by medical doctors or integrated uh, emergency surgical officers. So a minimum of 1,000, the minimum uh, caesarean section was seven with a recently assigned clinical midwife to a maximum 1,000 uh, was done and then, then except to postpartum morbidity, no case falsity was recorded. Uh, however, we found some issues which need to be corrected. Uh, one is the uh, surgical and theoretical clinical skill need to be increased to three years. In Ethiopia, the curriculum is two and a half years, but the um, participants, they recommend uh, they, it, it is uh, better to increase two and a half years, uh, um, and, uh, sorry, half, uh, half year, a year, so that uh, one, uh, we can use this uh, the additional half year for internship program in busy hospitals. This is a word from obstetrician and gynecologist in Northwest Ethiopia, which recommends that this can be used, the added half year can be used so that they will develop uh, confidence. 
and then the other is they need more general surgery exposure like they are uh, when the gynecologist and the others assess the, the the competency of this professional they say they are very good in obstetric procedures definitely but the abdominal procedures like um, uh, in, uh, managing injured bladder managing injured rectum ruptured rectum in that case uh, they may need more skills so uh, one they need some surgical exposure in addition to the obstetric one um, more ex surgical exposure uh, and the other uh, this can be achieved in busy hospital so if the training can be increased to three years uh, after the base the second is in in the visited schools among the six one uh, some have very good uh, skill lab up to the standard uh, the others they 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 have uh, no uh, complete instruments like to, to practice before they go to the actual surgery they they have to practice in a skill lab in a simulated setting so uh, at least it has to be harmonized among all the schools uh, the other is the student enrollment more major, major, the intakes uh, were uh, coming from universities but the participants suggested especially this obstetrician and gynecologist from northern Ethiopia, he suggested that if they come from the practical area, they have more like health centers and hospitals. They have than universities. They have they have more interest, more eager for the, to learn the skill, and also they can go back and serve the community. Um, another challenge is it comes from the professionals themselves. They said. Um, the, even they have agreed agreed to to work with with any condition, but the Ministry of Health doesn't support them with proper JEG and uh, scope of practice. So they are, they are forced to work under the the scope the practice of the license of obstetricians and the gynecologists. So these were say good morally as well as also professionally hurting them. And they are not also getting the benefit where what they have to get, and then also uh, the another challenge is organization and health system challenge. One, there is no proper um, scope of practice uh, given to these professionals uh, uh, according to their competency. Uh, in Ethiopia, we call it uh, in in some countries it is called the job description. In Ethiopia, we call it JEG. Is not where well, the formulated and given to this professional and so they 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 they, they have a, um an issue when they they go to the practice there uh, so the management the hospital management you have no proper practice you have no proper jj and they, they are not getting their benefit their um, um, professional um, also responsibility uh, so it is not well understood by the health system both at uh, at the regional and federal level, um, that is also another challenge. In conclusion, uh, from our finding, we said uh, there is high clear satisfaction and the program is highly supported by all stakeholders. Uh, however, even though this, there is a, a consensus that these experienced midwives can be back, uh, become EMOC providers by being taught all the skills needed to undertake advanced obstetric procedures such as cesarean section. However, lack of policy and regulatory document um, from uh, Ministry of Health, uh, especially the scope of practice, JEG, um, job description, and uh, proper deployment policy from federal as well as regional levels state level is hindering this prof professional utilization even the re the regions which allow them to practice they are not practicing with with clear jg and they are not even motivated according to the standard or uh, in in comparison with uh, as a professional there is a gap in coordination among the uh, minister of health minister of science and higher education in curriculum harmonization so that there is some difference in curriculums among schools and this is not not good uh, to have uh, the same level of training and the same quality of service gap related to availability and education of skill lab also were noted especially surgical skill lab and the length of practical stay also has to be increased there is a gap
Uh, so we have given this recommendation based on our uh, uh, finding. Uh, one, er, there is a need to properly recognize clinical midwife with defined scope of practice as EMOC ser service providers. Uh, by the Minister of Health, there is a need to prepare JG as stipulated in the curriculum and uh, stated competencies. There is a need for cl clear policy document for their recruitment, therefore their deployment, and they have to be motivated and their career pathway have to be clearly stated by the ministry as well as Minister of Higher Education and the region. There is a need for collaboration so that a standard training and the coordination among the intake and output has to be organized. Uh, for regional health bureau, uh, for state health departments, we said the region has to own the program so that they can give proper support, especially when these students are going to regional hospitals, they will get proper support. Uh, so the region has to own this program. There is a need for pre-regional plan, especially a policy document, how to recruit and send these students for training and how to recruit them back when they, they, they trained, finish their training. And their deployment after graduation has to be clearly stated, motivation scheme and career pathway. And after graduation, supervision, proper supervision and follow-up and upgrading mecha uh, mechanism has to be needed. Uh, in a, in a, uh, for training institute for the six universities and additional one which are coming soon. So there is a need for curriculum harmonization and standardization among the all training institute so that we have the same output in all the areas and the same quality of care. Quality assurance schemes such as surgical skill assessment and deployment in hospitals with client type low is also recommended. Um, their entry is mostly from universities, has to be revised and more chance has to be given for, for those coming from service areas. Um, one, the training institute has to integrate teaching with practical so that the, tra the trainers has to go to the practical areas and, and practice with their students. So with this, we have we have, we we acknowledge Ethiopia Midwife Association who organize and sponsor this training. The federal minister of health who support us in all process during this training. Uh, Regional Health Bureau Training Institute, specialist senior obstetrician gynecologist friends, and um, uh, clinical midwives. All those give us important training. Professor. Stefan from Sweden, he, he gave us an important input and he's also the founder of this program in Mozambique. So we want to thank all of you and our, our viewers uh, and, and listeners. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Fekedu Takele, for this wonderful presentation. Sylvia, you can go on. Yes, um, another thank you to our presenters, Mr. Takele, Mr. Fekatu, and Mr. Um, wow. Belete. Belete. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, indeed, uh, your presentation really ties in with this year's theme follow the data, invest in the midwives with this kind of uh, researchers. Uh, they give us new evidence that is going to help spearhead the global and regional as well as the uh, national efforts to engage in, in reproductive maternal and newborn uh, child outcomes worldwide. So thank you very much for this very in in insightful uh, presentation. We are now going to allow for some questions. Um, from the public, if you, anybody has questions, kindly type them in the uh, public chat. Alternatively, unmute yourself and please ask your question. We are reserving merely three minutes for this uh, part of questions. Uh, while we are waiting for some questions, I'm just going to read some of the comments that were said, that were posted in the public chat. Halima Musa Abdul says, great study and presentation. And then Get Getahun says, good findings. Tena 
no work. <laughs> Nessa says, great findings, good tasks for all the team. Gatti Lake says, well done, Feki and the team at all. Thank you for your nice presentation. And Mihiretu Mola Enyu says, salute to Fiki and the team. Interesting findings. Thank you so much. Um, this is from Animut uh, Tagele. And then Catherine Shimechero wants to find out how come there are more male midwives training in the universities? I think uh, Tefekatu. Okay. Um, maybe. Okay. Thank you very much, Catherine, for the question. Uh, generally, this is a problem in um, in in in. It's it's not only in midwifery, but in 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 all parts of the training in Ethiopia, uh, because you know, like in Africa, where patriarchal society and more males have access to education than females. So generally, the higher education, um, when you, at the elementary level, it's almost the same, but reaching at higher institute level, when you see a degree level and above, there more males are represented than females, and this is the same for midwifery. So, but in diploma level, there are more midwives, the more diploma, mid, uh, more females than males. But when you see when it go up, the more males are represented. So that is why um, um, there are more males in Ethiopia midwife. Uh, but in Ethiopian mothers, they 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 have no problem with uh, having service with more male and female midwives. Okay. Thank you for the response. Another question. Another question from Ginger Midwife. Are the men accepted by women giving birth? I think this will be our last question. Okay, uh, may, may I continue? Yes. Hello? Okay. Uh, as we mentioned yes. earlier in, in answering the first question, here in Ethiopia, uh, there are no the community has no any problem just getting the service from male midwives and males are equally preferred by by delivery mother pregnant woman and other other uh, part of the community coming for health seeking uh, but even there are other other parts of the like uh, eastern part of of the country uh, maybe the community may prefer um female midwives and male midwives and you know the region trained more female uh, midwives than male midwives in that uh, in, in that part of the community otherwise as as a country there is no uh, preference uh, of female midwives than, than uh, male midwives okay thank you very much uh, that concludes our session on questions